Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to The Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and you're watching The Daily Dose of Hope. Hopefully, everybody can hear me out there. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Nice and uh, nice emojis there to let me know that you can hear me just fine. Okay, good. All right. I think we're good. All right. So today we are going to be looking into Psalm chapter 37, verses 1 to 4. Now, in the last year and a half, this is interesting. In the last year and a half, I've only used this psalm one time. And... Um, it was actually part of what we're going to look at today, but it was something entirely different. So I encourage you to read through Psalm 37. It is a great um, Psalm of David if you're looking for um, just trying to get through life when it seems so unfair. And I know there's a lot of people out there right now that are struggling and life just doesn't seem fair all the time. Maybe you're a student and you want to be back in the classroom. Maybe you're a worker and you want to be back to work. Maybe you're in a relationship that's gone bad and you want to be back in that relationship. We're going to be looking at that in Psalm 37, verses 1 to 4. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and we'll ask God to bless our time together. Dear Lord, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a powerful, mighty God. We thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you for caring for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being a Father in heaven that gives us a way out of situations. You give us a way out of sin. Lord, in fact, we know that if we stumble in sin, we know that we can confess that sin to you by simply going to 1 John 1, 9, which says, Lord, if I confess my sin to you, I know that you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, as we examine Psalm 37, verse 1 to 4, help our minds to be focused on this scripture right now. Help take away all those distractions that are in our way right now. Help us to fo focus fully on you. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Okay, again, my name is Chaplain Bob, and I am a grateful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, a uh, longtime missionary, longtime high school administrator and teacher, and um, love, love, love to uh, go camping and going on waterfall adventures, uh, water adventures. We love all that kind of stuff, and um, luckily my wife loves that kind of stuff too, so it works out great. All right, so today we are in Psalm chapter 37, verses 1 to 4, and I'm titling this Evil People. You can see over there on the side of the screen, Evil People. Um, and you'll see what I mean when we go through this. So let's go through this together. Psalm 37, 1 to 4, and when we're finished, we'll come back and break it down. Don't be upset because of evil people. Don't be jealous because of those who do wrong. Because like the grass, they will soon dry up. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and feed on the truth. Enjoy serving the Lord, and he will give you what you want. Okay, I'm using the New Century Version to, to preach from and to teach from tonight. I did read this and and learn this in uh, the New King James Version, but the NCV is much easier for us to understand, and so we're going to use that tonight. Now, there's a few things here. We're calling this evil people, and evil people are mentioned here in this text, okay? And I want you to clearly understand, this is a psalm of David. David was going through difficult times, as all of us will, okay? And apparently there was something going on in David's life where he needed uh, to talk to God and God needed to encourage David. And so we're looking at that in context, okay? So Psalm 37, verse 1, don't be upset because of evil people. Don't concern yourself with the evil people in your life. Um, he says, don't become upset with them. And that's difficult, right? I mean, when people are evil... When there are evil people, I'm thinking about politicians right now in the United States. There are a lot of evil people running the United States right now. And it just seems like it's happened over the last few years. And 
I think about those evil people, and I think about some of the evil decisions they're making. And some of those evil decisions they're making is affecting all of us around the planet. But the psalmist here, David, says, don't be upset because of evil people. What does he mean? He says, don't be jealous of those who do wrong. Um, I often think about that. There are a lot of people that do wrong things out there, and it seems like they get away with it. And they get rewarded for it. How many times do you see this in real life where people do bad things and then they get rewarded for it? Or they never, they never face any justice. They never do any jail time. There's never any investigation. I heard a story today in a newspaper that I read online that said um, there was one person that was part of a riot or part of a protest, depending on who you ask, on January 6th in Washington, D.C., and there was one person at this um, January 6th uh, protest that got shot, and she was shot by a police officer. And today, I heard in the newspaper that the police officer is not going to receive any investigation. He's been exonerated. Now, he shot this woman in the back. She didn't even know that he was shooting her. She wasn't running. She didn't have a gun. She was just there protesting, and he shot her in the back. And for me, it made my blood boil, because there should be justice there. There should be an investigation there. But David is saying, don't be jealous of those who do wrong. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're jealous of the fact that these people get away with it, but you don't. You know, for example, here in Metro Manila, one time I was driving with my wife and my son, and I had a headlight that was out. One headlight was out, the other headlight was working, and the police officer pulled me over. But yet, every time I drive, it seems like I see people with their headlights out. It makes me jealous. They don't get stuck, they don't get caught, they don't get the violation, but I do. David says, don't do that. David says, don't become upset over, over these evil people that are out there. Now, let's look at verse 37 too. Because like the grass, these evil people, he's saying, because like the grass, they, the evil people, will soon dry up. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Now, if you've had any kind of green uh, plants in your home, or in your garden, or outside, or if you have any grass, you know that in the summer months, grass will turn literally white. It'll go from beautiful green to being dried up to nothing. And that's what David is saying. These people, these evil people, these people that do wrong deeds, will eventually face their maker. They'll face the end. That's what David's saying. So just have patience in that. Verse 3, he says, you don't want to do those things. You don't want to get upset with the evil people. Okay? He says, this is what you should do in verse 3 and 4. He says, trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and feed on truth. Okay? Trust the Lord and do good. Okay? You see all the bad people doing bad. Trust the Lord and do good. And live in the land and feed on truth. Now, what's the truth he's talking about there? What's the feed he wants us to do? He wants us to be in the Holy Bible. Feed on the truth every day. Bring it into your brain. Read Scripture. I have a professor on Wednesday nights. He says, take in large amounts of Scripture at a time. Don't take in one verse or two verses don't take in four verses like we're using tonight. He says, take in large amounts. He says, read a whole chapter and see how it changes your life. He says, David says here in this psalm, he says, live in the land. Live where you live. Don't let the bad people, don't let the evil people interrupt your life. Live the way you should be living, which is doing good things and trusting in the Lord. Now let's go to verse 4. He says, enjoy serving the Lord. When you serve, you should be doing it 
in the name of the Lord. Not for your own good, not so they can take a, a photo op. I saw today a group of politicians here in my local area all taking pictures, passing out um, food and vegetables. Hey, it's a great idea to pass out food, fruit and vegetables. It's a great idea to pass out rice and, and different kinds of vegetables. There's no problem with that. But why do you have to take a picture? Because it's self-absorbed. That's why. That's why they take the picture. Because they want everybody to look at them. But David here says, enjoy serving the Lord. Do everything you do when you serve to serve the Lord. And he, David makes a promise here, and he will give you what you want. When you do things in the name of the Lord, the Lord is glorified through that. And when you have God's will in mind, God's will lining up with your will, you're going to get what you want. Now, this is not, this is a, one of those prosperity gospel um, verses that the prosperity gospel preacher likes to use. Basically, what that means is that uh, a prosperity gospel would look at this verse, a prosperity gospel teacher or preacher would say, enjoy serving the Lord. When you serve the Lord, he's going to give you what you want. So go serve the Lord and you're going to get a million dollars. No, that's not how it works. Go out and serve the Lord in his name, bringing joy to him, bringing uh, glorification to him, glorifying him every time you serve, and then watch. He's going to give you what you want because your will is no longer your own. It's his will. You're looking to his will for everything that you're doing. So let's go back to the beginning again. David says in verse 1, don't become upset at these evil people. Don't be jealous about these people that are doing wrong. You don't want to do wrong in the first place. It's not a good idea to do wrong. So don't be jealous of the evil people. And he says, because they're eventually going to wither up like the grass. They're going to go away very quickly like that green plant does the next year. Okay? He says, this is what you should be doing. Trust in the Lord, do good, and live your life. Live in the land and feed on the book. Feed on the word of God. And then he says, enjoy serving the Lord. Just enjoy it. Don't make it a burden in your life. And he, meaning God, will give you what you want. And remember, you keep praying for what you want. You keep praying for God's favor. You keep praying for God's will in your life, in your ministry, in your service. And then he's going to give you what you want. Don't be confused. Once again, caution, caution. Don't be confused. This verse is not telling you to go out and work really hard, and then God's going to give you whatever you want because he's going to reward you for your hard work. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. If your preacher is preaching that, it's more than likely your preacher is a prosperity gospel preacher, and that is not what we subscribe to here at Hope Heals International Ministry. God is sovereign. God gives blessings, not because of what we do, but because of who he is, because he wants to bless us. God loves us, not because of who we are. He loves us because of who he is. Does that make sense to you? Good. All right. So that's it for tonight. Enjoy serving the Lord. Go out and glorify God in everything that you do and stop worrying about those evil people. I know that on the screen over here it says, you know, when life is unfair. Yeah, there's a lot of unfair things in life, but stop worrying about the evil people. Stop worrying about the people that are doing wrong that get rewarded. And instead, serve the Lord with joy. Enjoy serving the Lord. And then watch. He's going to give you exactly what you've been hoping for. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise your holy, holy name. Thank you for being a great father in heaven. We love you, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless our families with good immunity. Help us to get good rest, eat good foods. Help us to remain strong in this time that's so crazy, so unfair in a lot of cases, Lord. Help us to be prompted to go to your word, Lord. Help us to feed on your word and help us to live our life the way that we can, the best way we can. We love you, Lord, and we pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen.
Okay, so that's it for tonight. That's our sermon for today. We want to thank you for being here at, at the a Daily Dose of Hope. We're going to invite you back here on Friday, tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be here a little bit earlier uh, in the afternoon tomorrow, so you can look forward to that. Thank you for your continued prayers. Uh, we say God bless you, especially those of you that greeted us during our anniversary. We really appreciate that. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow on Friday. God bless you. And here's a little bit of easy to forget from Skyly Shea. Enjoy this. Hello, everyone. That's there it is. Easy to forget. Right there. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Take care. <laughs>